Hi, my name is Marie Romagnano, founder of Healthcare Professionals for Divine Mercy. I'm so happy to present to you our educational conferences that integrate medicine, bioethics, and the spirituality of divine mercy in patient care for healthcare professionals. Because of their importance, even if you're not a medical professional, we invite you to join us. Today I wish to offer a summary of Father Don Calloway's presentation on the Blessed Virgin Mary, Our Lady, the Heavenly Nurse, and Care of Our Patients. Father Don, a Marian father, is a very well-known conference speaker on Divine Mercy and the Blessed Virgin Mary. In this talk, Father Don discusses how Our Lady is our Heavenly Nurse and is a role model on how we should treat our patients. Father Don starts with a quote from Venerable Bishop Fulton Sheen, stating, Two of the noblest professions in the world are those of the nurse and the doctor. Father Don noted that the patient sees the nurse first. She or he is the one who checks the vitals, comforts and reassures, and is the matrix between the patient and doctor. Catholic theology says grace builds on nature and the supernatural builds on the natural. In the various gospels, Jesus is the divine physician and comes to heal the sick. Mary is the nurse in God's rehabilitation center, that is the church. She is the model of the noble profession of nursing. Just as we put salve on a wound, the divine physician offers eternal health, that is salvation. Our lady is at his side as a coworker. She's not God and not divine, but she is there as his physician assistant. And our healing instrument is the Eucharist. It is the greatest medicine and is free of charge. Bishop Sheen said that there are three characteristics that nurses should have. An incision, she or he needs to care for self and thus better understand the patient and have empathy, cheerfulness, and a sense of the divine. Doctors and nurses need reverence for the human person and a desire for personalized care rather than socialized medicine. Medical work is a great work of mercy. Never be afraid to approach Mary with our aches and pains. And remember, the child who falls the most gets the most attention from their mother. I think we all know that. Our Lady takes us to the divine physician so salve can be applied. She is a guidepost for healthcare professionals as to how we accomplish our work. We must listen to her as they did at Cana when she said, do whatever he tells you. Father Don ends his talk with a quote from Bishop Sheen. The clergy and the doctors, ministry and medicine, Preaching and healing are two great professions which are caring for the person. Both deal with the sacred. May these two professions continue to be comrades and brothers in the holiest and most noble service of humanity for the health of the body and peace of the soul. I invite you to now listen to the wonderful presentation by Father Don Calloway as he develops the theme of the Blessed Virgin Mary as Our Lady, the Heavenly Nurse, and care of our patients. Thank you. I, I love talking about this, so I'll, I'll be brief. Uh, um, so, yeah, I, uh, oh boy, if you want to learn about the conversion, just get the book. It's all in the book, but uh, it takes a long time to explain that. But, um, yeah, I, I wasn't Catholic, and I had a huge conversion. I was a teenage delinquent, like you don't know. I got kicked out of a foreign country, jail, rehabs, all that stuff. Had long hair down on my waist. You name it. <laughs> um, so it was through Our Lady that I had the conversion. She brought me to Jesus Christ. And so I'm eternally grateful for that. And that's why I joined this Marian community, which um, thanks be to men like Father Katz who accepted me, a man of mercy who, you know, uh, I mean, it was a, what God did in my life is not the norm. You know, most times people who lived my kind of past don't become priests, but he gave me a lot of healing. God gave me my manhood back. He gave me my emotional stability back. I was a messed up individual. So thanks be to God and for, for good men who um, you know, helped bring about these vocations. So the funny thing is, is that now I'm the vocation director. Um, <laughs> who would have thought? So, um, and I love doing it. I've been doing it for several years and I'm so happy to report that our community right now, currently we have 32 seminarians and we just on Monday accepted another five men to come in. They'll enter in the summer and um, they're great men. 
uh, there are different ages and backgrounds and so forth, uh, from age 18 to age 45, maybe a little even older than that, just fantastic men. And they've been touched by Our Lady uh, and by mercy, and they want to be a part of that. And so um, we're really blessed to be, to be able to do this. And it's not because we're special. We're nothing. You know, we're, we're wounded just like everybody else. But it's because God is, is really doing something in our times. And this message of mercy um, really touches hearts. I can tell you that most of the men, almost all of the men who are uh, discerning vocations of the priesthood today, whether with the Marians or a diocese or a different community, most of them at some point in their life were not the most devout of men. They fell away. You know, they struggled. They went to college, left the faith or, you know, did whatever, but they had a conversion experience and God brought them back. And now they want to be apostles of mercy. They want to be witness to, to God's goodness and, 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 and love. And so it's, it's amazing to see what's happening. Um, we're so blessed right now. I live in Steubenville, Ohio. Uh, if you've heard about Steubenville, it's, just, it's Catholicism with a punch. You know, it's just amazing. I, I love it. Scott Hahn is our neighbor, if you've heard of him, right? It's just amazing. Um, we almost don't have enough room to house all the men that we're receiving, literally. Um, we have to, the last vocation retreat I did, I had to uh, get a blow-up air mattress to be able to house the men who visit because we're getting so many vocations. So it's fantastic what's happening. So I, I personally, as the vocation director and on behalf of Father Kaz, our provincial and my other brother Marians uh, throughout uh, the United States, thank you for your prayers. I know that many of you pray for vocations uh, to the priesthood uh, and you may not see the fruits of that immediately sometimes. You may wonder, where are they? I keep praying day and night, you know, uh, where are these priests? They're coming. God is doing uh, something uh, marvelous. And so I thank you. I know that the men in seminary thank you, uh, because without your prayers uh, and support, you know, they, they, they wouldn't be able to, uh, to achieve it. So um, keep those prayers coming, because they really do work, okay? I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have one of these things around my neck if it wasn't for you. Uh, it's, it's those faithful people who pray you know, for vocations that really, it really does have an impact. It really does have meaning. So um, one lady raised her hand. Would you like to ask a question? Sure. Yeah, it was a book called The Queen of Peace Visits Medjugorje. Um, it's out of print now. Um, and, you know, there's, there's, Medjugorje is not approved. Uh, it may be at some point. Uh, but there's been so many hearts who have been touched by that. Uh, it's an apparition, by the way, if you, if you don't know about it. You've heard of perhaps Fatima or Lourdes or Guadalupe. Uh, so in the early 80s, allegedly, uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary began to appear in Bosnia. And um, I read a book because, see, my, my whole family is converted to Catholicism. Uh, I, I, it's funny. I joke with my mom. I tell my mom that I'm the reason she found God because <laughs> I drove her nuts. <laughs> she needed help. <laughs> so she, she doesn't laugh at that. But um, laughter. My mom's a saint. I canonize my mom. I call my mom my Monica, if, if you know what I mean by that. I'm not Augustine by any means, but my mom is Monica. She put up with a lot. Um, so that was the book. Um, it was, it's out of print now, but um, you know, there's a lot of other great books out, out there on Our Lady. And that's why I think um, books can change people's lives. You know this. Uh, and that's why I, I seek to write tons of books, because I can't speak everywhere. I'm not Padre Pio. I can't bilocate, you know, that whole walking through walls thing doesn't work for me yet. I hit my head on it every time I try it. Um, so that's why most of my books are on the Blessed Virgin Mary, because I know experientially the power that a book about this most beautiful woman, this most lovely, feminine, tender, compassionate, merciful woman led me to Jesus Christ. And I want to be a part. I want to facilitate that experience with other people. So, and, and my community does as well. So that's why the men who come in, they really love the Blessed Virgin Mary. because She really is so important for us to help our culture, our times, and people fall more in love with Jesus and to help them to be better people themselves. Okay, is that sufficient? You good? Okay, God bless you guys. And I'm going to pray for you guys and pray for me too.